That'd be great. Sure. All right. And we are good to go. So can you see the home screen? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So uh, free to sign up. It's actually free to register, free to create an event, customize it, publish it. Uh, ViewStub does work as a pay-per-view model, so we just take a percentage, um, which are reflected in the fees, and I will show you that live. For now, we're gonna start with the main dashboard. So a shortcut to the dashboard would be clicking your name at the top right. That's always useful to know. Uh, these are gonna be where your balances will be reflected as you make sales. As soon as an available balance hits, you will be able to uh, withdraw funds. So you do not actually yeah. have to wait until your event date. Yeah, that is pretty cool. And and you know what the, the greatest part about this compared to YouTube that you guys put the money right front and center because at the end of the day, we wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for, you know, that that aspect of it. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, your content is worth something. So it is good to right. establish your price and, and to name your price. So with that being said, a uh, great analytical tool here. You can actually change the time frame, but you can actually see where your total sales are per month. Um, same thing with total purchases, as in the number of tickets that you have sold. And that is also customizable. This is great. Um, I'm sure Patrick may have mentioned our white label feature. So if you choose to white label, you get to see how many people get directed to your website versus your ViewStub landing page. And just to clarify, you can have both. So if you want to put uh, the event on your website as well as publicly on ViewStub, you're more than welcome to. And then you can also keep track of how many uh, people are brought in through your affiliate links. Yeah, and that's truly your guys' competitive advantage you know, with the Up and Up Festival that I'm currently working with that they're going through Eventbrite, through YouTube, you know, so they're going through, you know, two middlemen to get to their, their clients. And what's most interesting is the employee that found me, uh, who's also local to Oxford uh, in the Cincinnati area, uh, what she was telling me was by herself, she sold five to 600 tickets by herself wow. right you know in that her dream is eventually to have her own show or her own festival and now you know since we're doing virtual pay-per-view events mm -hmm. you know it makes a whole you know heck of a lot of sense and then also when it comes to in-person events as well that up and up it's really a no-brainer because why would you want to go anywhere else but your website embedded you know right. that uh right. that's the competitive advantage where it's a walled garden. It's kind of like, you know, creating a YouTube that doesn't start at zero. You know, that think about like all the crap watching that people do. What if you only had to pay like 10 cents per view, but the view actually really mattered? You could load up your account with a balance or a gift card or something, you know, and whether or not it's educational or uh, I don't, I digress. I mean, we can have this conversation. Almost like day, a but. subscription model. Absolutely. Well, microtransactions, right? And I mean, think about it. Think about uh, meet and greets too, like a cameo, but for Zoom. That do you want to meet Beyonce? All right, it's going to be fifteen thousand dollars, you know, to sit on a Zoom with her for twenty minutes. Yeah, you know, that can happen virtually than in person as well for security yeah. reasons. Oh, yeah. security, and I mean, I was on tour with Post Malone in twenty seventeen. And cool. the cringiness, you know, and obviously we're not, I guess we're recording, so I don't want to say too much, but, you know, it, it gets pretty uh, uncomfortable when you're, you know, hugging, you know, a thousand people in a line. You know, you can't really have that emotional connection, but something like ViewStub could provide that experience where, you know, it's, it's like Cameo, but it's more long form kind of content where I'm not right. wishing you a happy birthday. I'm calling you on your birthday you know, from view stub type of thing. Exclusivity. You know? It's huge. It really is huge. And yeah. it has a price tag on it. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. yeah and all those analytics and stuff. So, yeah. And that's one thing that, you know, although Google on the surface, you know, gives you analytics, like this is like the analytics of what matters, like right up front, not, you know, dig through AdWords, dig through, yeah. you know, 
And we, we try to keep the content creators in mind, you know, you guys as event organizers, what is the information that you guys need, you know, that you guys require up front. So, yeah. and, and we also take feedback. We have feedback forms on our homepage. Um, if you ever see something that you wish was either easier to I, use. I mean, for example, the green screen feature that I think on your native uh, camera that mm -hmm. there is no native green screen feature. So, you know, if we were to be doing the green screen, I would have to, you know, and I can still put it through Ecamm because Ecamm, right, well, I don't know if you can see my screen, but I'm using Ecamm and it outputs at 4K, you know, whereas with mm -hmm. Zoom or anything else, you know, you're not gonna get 4K. Um, now that's a crappier camera. I have a better one uh, behind me, but I didn't really have all the time in the world here, but. I did um, like the setup though. The setup was nice. I saw. Sure. The yeah, we've got a 3,600 square foot building. Uh, this will kind of be the Cyclorama studio, and then mm -hmm. on the other side of the building, it will kind of be like a multi-purpose space, you know. Um, and then there's an office, and we're on an acre and a half. There's a lake on one side. My neighbors oh, got wow. acres, so great you know, We live in the middle of nowhere, so we can really do whatever we want. You got good Wi-Fi though, right? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. So that you know, um, once we start making some you know view stub money, we'll invest it into some fiber internet, right? And there's a lot of that going around. Yeah, that going around, absolutely. All right, so let's dig in. Do you have any questions about these four things here? <sighs> um, I do want to point out this button here that gets uh, ignored a little bit. But it's okay. very important, useful. Excel. This is where you export all of your attendee information. Mm. So uh, just to give you a glimpse of what it, it kind of looks like, all this information here is provided to you on a CSV file. Mm. So you guys can export that, um, use it like to your Excel computer. spreadsheet kind of deal? Yep, exactly that. It yep. is an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. Cool. And you can see it for all of your events. Um, that same dashboard, if you want to see it per event, you actually can see the analytics per event versus all of your events together. Yeah. And event. other than the green screen, I think by you sitting down with Kelsey, the employee of up and up and walking her through this same thing, I'm sure she would have five times as many thoughts as I would as far as the logistics, because she just DM'd me on Instagram and said, do you do visuals? right? And they had a thousand dollar budget from Monster. And so rather than buying a GoPro, they just gave me a thousand dollars. And now here we are, right? Wow. So Elsie is the boss. You know, she's the one that, you know, like I said, sold all the tickets and would have all these insights or questions, right? Like, sure. I'm like the technical guy. Like I want to make sure everything runs and everything, but I'm sure Kelsey will have a lot more, uh, excitement yeah, absolutely. to give you, you know? Yeah. Um, if Kelsey ever wants to sit down and, and, and have a, a demonstration with me more in depth, maybe to, to what he wants to know or she wants to yeah, know. I mean, after after the event on the 10th, because we're, we're obviously stressed out that <laughs> I've probably edited <laughs> like 20 videos in the past week and I've got to edit another 35 or something in the next week. That's tedious. So, uh, you know, but I'm getting paid finally, you know, so it's great. You know, Monster. And the only thing is like I'm more of a water kind of guy. Like I don't. I don't really support pop or, you know, uh, energy drinks or anything like that. Like, I'm like, Monster, where's this, like, water or fruit <laughs> juice? Or, where's the know, spring where? located for that? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so let's let's get into it. I don't want to – I'm a talker, so I'm sorry. Me too. Me too. No problem. <laughs> okay. So when it comes to the dashboard, it's pretty user-friendly, self-explanatory. You do have shortcuts here for more specific things. Um, most importantly, where you go to edit an event, this is the page when you click mm. on create an event. This is where it basically brings you. Mm. Super easy to build an event. You plug in your event name. It will generate a URL, but that too is customizable. When you want to add a ticket, you add a ticket. The tickets are customizable as well. So for example, when you go into a ticket, you can actually um, see mm. what the payout would be live. So you get to pass down your fees if you choose so. You could play around with what you want to receive per ticket. So as you can see, everything does change. So you get to see what your stuff would be live. 
you would get $80 like you want. And if you choose to pass down your fees, the customer, you'll see that they'll pay $98, mm. 35 cents. So, super so the, the idea that I had with picking the uh, tickets would even be a uh, yeah, plug in the Mac. I saw that too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that kind of like, think about it like eBay, right? Where mm -hmm. it would be kind of like a bidding war until you reached a reserve and then the concert Ooh. would go live. Where let's say if artists don't have the budget to pay me a thousand dollars, they would be forced to sell 200 tickets at five dollars a pop in order, you know, we've already post production, you know, it's mm -hmm. literally just a matter of, you know, public or private, you know, hey, you know, you beat that thousand dollar threshold, anything over that you get to keep, you know, if you want to hold off on posting the concert for a week or two, you know, it's up to the artist kind of thing. And right now we do have one of J. Cole's artists that I've been sending test footage to as well. And uh, so what I'm thinking is, is visualize a concert flyer with 90% of the names uh, blurred out, right? And then as mm -hmm. the names were to get released, more, mm -hmm. you know, pay-per-views would get bought. And then right. once it hit over a threshold, it would be up to us whether or not to go, all right, well, let's give our Patreons or let's give our view stubbians or I, I don't even know, like, what's the, uh, you know, the, the term I for that. we might still need one. Yeah. Open to suggestions. Sure. Uh, so with, you know, Patreon, it's kind of like, you know, or it's kind of like an OnlyFans type of thing too, like a virtual pay-per-view OnlyFans where, like, you get it, or I mean, I mean, I don't know. I digress. So yeah, that's where I was thinking about these general admissions I'm tickets. Up what you're putting down, yeah. Did you set like a goal type of thing where like so many tickets have to be bought, or like to be able to for them to see like in real time, like hey, there's a limited amount. You know, there's 200 tickets. Yeah. Or, you know, it's probably not as automated as you would like it to be okay. from what I'm picking up. But yes, and I I'm can, just making this up. I'm totally making all this stuff up. You can too, actually so. do that now. Yeah, okay. you can do that now, but it's a little bit more manual. So, okay. and I'll tell you what I mean by that. Uh, the tickets are very versatile, very flexible to pretty much do what you want with them. So this was just the, the pricing portion of it. Sure. Of course, you can name your ticket. You can even set viewer access. So if you want to charge a more expensive ticket for a 60 day versus 30 day and even more for a 180 mm. day, you guys could do up to 365 on here. So that Going is for like quarterly events, just schedule them ahead of time. And yeah. the greatest thing would be is to post production it and have them just ready to go, you know, and be in Fiji, you know, getting cooked on the beach you know, <laughs> with everybody. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> Ticket dates. So as you see for my example, I have an early bird. You can put them to start selling and end selling um, whenever you choose a ticket description. And this okay. is where you could display. Ticket, how many yeah. Tickets Look at you. Yep. Yep. You can limit them yeah, right there. Cause that's the whole thing. Like fear of missing out, you know, and having a limited oh, amount, yeah. you know, <laughs> relatively cheap, you know, but then also meet and greets that are 200 bucks or something. You know, a virtual said, and I will show you that under our event media section. But with that being said, you can assign specific ticket holders, specific access to mm. media. So if you do want to put a special VIP access limited to 20 people for a meet and greet, um, you can do that and only assign the meet and greet to those ticket holders. Mm -hmm. So it'll be under your playlist, but anyone that didn't purchase that ticket won't be able to see it. Yeah. So that's important. Or it could be behind the scenes footage. It could be a yeah, vlog. It could content. be a live stream of us setting up. Um, Absolutely. Cool. So there's that easy. Uh, foreign currencies. These are the current currencies that we accept currently. Um, oh wow! Because that opens us up because it's on it's virtual. Everybody, yeah. Yeah, anybody can uh, purchase um, in any of these. The default is USD currency. Sure. Um, so any currencies that we don't have, they would just pay in USD. Mm -hmm. And then your refund policy, if you want them to be able to contact you about your event, this. 
um, is for Vista Stub Marketplace only. So this doesn't apply if you want to white label. You could choose to have it private. This is also what you would do if you want to just maybe see if we can host your event. You want to build your event and test it out first before oh, public. Oh, yeah, testing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Private event is what you're going to want to do. If you choose to have it public in our marketplace, um, you could put it in there forever, or you could pick a date um, to keep that exclusivity that you're looking for. This is there as far as like a featured event or like, do you guys have any like they do. sponsored content with featured events or something like that? They do on their social media um, market specific events and you can uh, request that. So um, depending on um, the details of your event. Um, I'm well, just talking about generally as far as company wide. That I didn't know, like, oh. do you guys have any, like, favorites, favorite creators or, you know, people that you guys have, like, built relationships with for a long time? Like a spotlight? Or, yeah, like a spotlight or... Uh, it's in the works. I'll, I'll okay. leave it at that. It's okay. in the works. Well, because it's like, I've got this nice big studio, you know, and I know you guys are getting studios all over the, the country and stuff. And that that's, like, my dream job would be, like, to fly around to Airbnbs to, like, location search, right? We'd Ooh. buy Airbnbs with like big backyards. We'd build studios in the backyards and then run out the front to Airbnb that's already oh, being wow. ran, right? You know, like that a mobile AV service. My house is a hundred foot from this studio, right? That this is a compound. So oh, this wow. is what I would like to build near airports because that's the biggest thing is that, you know, I'm about 45 minutes out of the city, 30 minutes, give or take. Um, so obviously studios closer to the city would be best. Yes. Yes. Cool. And that that's that's gonna come useful when things open back up again. Sure. Um, but you're definitely ahead of the curve for virtual events. But, but it's also a contactless studio where, you know, the engineer could be in the office and the artist could be in this room kind of thing, and it would be a contactless concert. Where it would be like American Idol without, and then with TV screens, you know, so then you don't actually have to interact with the people. Right. Coming, you know. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're gonna. Um, I digress, though. <laughs> you're gonna. We can have a, a long conversation when you know. it comes out. Yeah, I think you're gonna really love that. Oh, it, yeah. it ties into what you're looking to do too. So. Sweet. Sweet. Exciting stuff, yeah. This stuff is very self-explanatory, so I don't mind the conversation at all. Oh, okay. Thumbnails. Easy. Thumbnails. Um, yeah, very self explanatory. You just upload your thumbnails. They'll be displayed in a carousel format. Do you the max uh, file size that you can upload or dimensions or anything? I believe, like that. That's kind I believe, of a... um, the, the larger, the longer it takes. Oh, but um, it, yeah, there's no max to as far as like, because I know YouTube is like two megabytes an image or something like that. Yeah, no, there's there's no limit. Of course, they okay. have their recommendations. Well, I'll find a limit. I'll find a limit. I I'm mean, sure. And, and we, would love to know. we would love to know as well what that limit okay. would be. Okay. Um, but typically, the, log the larger the file, the longer it takes. Um, okay. I The largest that I've experienced was um, like a five-hour video. Um, what well, about for the thumbnail? That like, just like for the, it's like a JPEG or PNG, right? Yeah, correct correct that i was just i didn't know because like youtube has a limit of two megabytes but i didn't see that there was a, a we limit haven't had any that. issues yet yeah but push yeah, us. we'll see we'll see you to push us because we would like to know as well yeah because like what i can do is just like on adobe illustrator make the biggest canvas possible and then it'll be like you know 100 megabytes or something i don't know okay Wow. So, uh, that's just what I was thinking. <laughs> I, I just didn't know that it's like when I'm editing, I need to know like how big the files can be though. That's why I asked. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, definitely let us know. And I know here um, it would have to be a in URL format, so in link format. Oh. For the description. Oh, for the description. Okay. For the description, yeah. Okay. A little bit different there. Um, I know they're also working on upgrading this in itself. Um. And then yeah, it's quite beautiful. It's beautiful. It looks great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. everything that they release, it's usually like a phase one. So they just want to make sure that it's available to you. And then they want everyone's feedback to make sure it's user friendly enough. Or maybe you guys were were wanting something more robust. 
Um, but they do love feedback. So, sure. oh man, that's my middle. That, yeah, that's my middle name. yeah, on the home page, and I'll show it to you Bill, before we, we leave today. But on the home page, there's a feedback form. They read every single one and it gets added to our roadmap if it isn't already. But they also use it to prioritize, um, you know, because they're basically your demands, right? So we want to be able to meet everyone's demands on the platform. So, sure. The rest, um, like I said, it's for the View Stub landing page. If you want public affiliate links on there, you can assign them a, per a percentage or dollar amount per ticket, and they'll just put in their email and it'll generate them their own link. Once so like again, ambassadors, you know, like different things like that. Yeah, not for the white label, just for View Stub. Okay. If you use Facebook Pixel, what's, you what's can white label? That. Is white label like embedded what in our website or something like that? Yeah, and I actually have a demonstration page for okay. you. So um, if your event dates are available, you would put them. If not, uh, coming soon. So let me go ahead and show you the white label. That's here. However, I do want to um, show you the demo page. Cool. But in essence, the instructions are here. You just put in your, um, your URL. And once your URL is in, you save it. It's going to ask you for uh, a color that matches your website the best. And what that's going to do is embed our checkout box right here. It's going to embed our checkout box directly on your website. So this is your website. It's going to have your branding and everything. ViewStub basically won't be on anything. And instead of bringing people to your ViewStub URL, you'll actually just send them directly to your website. You'll advertise your website when advertising your event. Does that make sense? Cool. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. And the best thing about it is all around the checkbox, it's your property. So you can put sponsor logos, mm -hmm. um, any other offers that you have, any upcoming events. You know, it's a really great option because with your website, you basically have creative discretion to do whatever. Yeah, and could you post events that may or may not happen to get to see interest to then kind of like almost work backwards to see um, – like how earlier it said coming soon, like dates coming soon kind of thing. Mm -hmm. where like there's no penalties in a sense for like Absolutely. starting a bunch of festivals, promoting them, seeing which Absolutely. ones are successful and then dropping the ones that aren't kind of thing. If they don't yeah. reach the thousand dollar threshold or whatever. And if you put that coming soon, um, instead of purchase a ticket button being there, it'll be um, that they can contact you. Mm. So they'll just contact you to stay updated on that event. And so that's a great way, the coming soon feature, to, to see if people are interested. And to there's see. no cost as far as starting 100 events? Okay, okay. I'm trying to think. Uh, so. the, only, the only thing that I wouldn't want you to do is post an event that has sold even a handful of tickets. Um then they would have to be refunded if you choose Well, maybe them. it would be just the contact us page where it'd be like, you know, hey, let us know if you would be even, or what about an RSVP link, right? Where it would be like a contact us, but instead of contact, it would be RSVP to just see if we have enough RSVPs. And it also would build data, right? That people would have to give us our their emails for us to let them know, like, you know, if the concert's going to happen or not, or if it is here, buy a ticket kind of thing. Uh, because that's my problem. Basically, like, basically just to register their information. Yeah. Yeah. To like data mine, basically. Because for me, a lot of these artists I love, don't get me wrong. But with any artists, you know, they don't have any money, you know. So mm -hmm. I have a studio now and they all think I'm going to continue to do things for, you know, the strength of it. And although I'm working with this EDM company, you know, money is coming in. One uh, with EDM. I'm a huge EDM fan. Nice, nice. And so, I mean, October 10th is uh, our hour and a half set. It's like three days long. And they've got 60 That's around the corner. Yeah, next yeah. weekend. Yep. And mm -hmm. uh, so there's 60 schools that each get $1,000 for their virtual event. And what I said was, is why don't I just open up the studio for three days and just, you know, run it, you know, because all these kids are buying crappy GoPros and, you know, 
hanging out in their garage and, and sure it maybe looks party. more authentic it does look more authentic if you're a, a student but you know they had me spend like six hundred dollars of the thousand dollar budget on a mixer to like fix the echo in the room and so they they have different relationships with schools that mm -hmm. they're outfitting the public school system for live streaming and different things um yeah we we, we did have quite a few schools Sure. On Vista, yeah. Yeah, yep. so that's kind of my dream is the week after the event, I should have a meeting between Kelsey and Patrick, and then the following meeting would be, you know, the the owner of Up and Up, you know, and then if I can swing that because, like I said, 60 schools, you know, and they all typically uh, have a competition for selling tickets, and whoever wins wins a big event at their school. You know, probably twenty, thirty thousand people. Oh, okay. You know, so just, with uh, headliners, yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. And you guys do in person tickets as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so here, this no brainer. In person ticket looks like. Yeah. Exactly. So basically, uh, um, oh, virtual goodness. access, they get an access code. In person tickets, they get a QR code. Mm. So our um, in person. Ticketing is uh, touch and go, uh, touchless and go. It's a scanner. Uh, they would just scan the person in using their QR code. Mm. So simple enough, right? And people um, can check out with PayPal. They can check out with Cash App. They can check out with everything, basically. Credit or debit. Oh, credit okay. or debit. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no PayPal or no other things. So as you could see here, okay. um, yeah, we actually well. View stub, they actually did a um they actually ran some statistics and they saw that when you use a third party pay system, um only about fifteen percent of people are willing to do that. Mm, um yeah. the reason why white label is so successful is because people get to pay directly on your website for your event and they're more likely to do so than being sent to a third party. Makes sense. I mean, and that's the whole competitive advantage of uh, ViewStub. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's an all in one. one. Yeah. yeah. And Sweet. so the access codes are secure and it is a secure paywall. This, of course, isn't going to be on your website. Sure. It's for demonstration purposes. But as you could see, that same checkout box, when someone purchases a ticket, turns into it turns into the media player. On our website. Or on on your website, correct. So this is the same location where you embedded the checkout box. It's on your website. It'll uh, turn into the media player upon purchase. Um, and so what a great feature is you could actually upload a video. So if it's not the day of your event, uh, they now have access to the media player. They can um, watch maybe a trailer that you have provided for them or a preset uh, video content that they can watch up until the video itself kind of like a lobby or a pre-game or yeah uh, okay. a teaser a little real video sweet so uh we can have multiple live streams going on you can have multiple uploads and so they would be on your video playlist as long as they're set to be made public and then of course everyone can chat with each other okay is there donations like how like YouTube and uh, Twitch have like the annoying donations thing? Like, is it, it more? Is actually, yeah, it is actually set to be released. Um, hopefully by November, they're trying to have that ready before the yeah. holiday season. Yeah. Uh, but that is not a feature we currently have yet. The closest thing that we have to that would be our donation tickets. Yeah, I saw that. Mm -hmm. So the question would be, could you scroll down a little bit? Sure. Where we were at, uh, like the chat. So, like, when someone were to pay, like, I'm sure you've probably seen this on YouTube, where the and I know you can't see my hand on the screen. But like, you see where the chat little bubbles are. Like, there would be like a panel beside it where it would be kind of like the the top donator of the day or the top donator of the hour or, mm. you know, to kind of prioritize their comments to give incentive to donate and to also create like, you know, admins or 
you know, uh, also adds a little bit of a competitive streak to it. Yeah. Well, and that's the whole idea with YouTube is that nobody reads the comments, but if you pay, the creators feel obligated to answer. So then people pay in order for you yeah. to be obligated to answer. Yeah, definitely. I will, I will for sure be submitting a and feedback we're recording form. This too. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. I will be submitting a feedback form, but it would also benefit us greatly if you were to submit that feedback form okay. on, yeah, the external. Can you email me that, uh, like when you have a chance, of course. Sure. Yeah, of um, course. You know, and then any other stuff for, you know, another call that we could have that's just, you know, BSing about different features or ideas or, and we can move on too. Um, um, yeah. Any other, any other, um, Questions about this? Yeah, no, I mean, the chat, like I said, the only thought is I could see tons of micro transactions, right? Like whether or not it's the, uh, the you know, VIP chat donation thing or, right. you know, merchant, you right. know, clothing or sticker, you know, uh, uh, an embedding of teespring.com or something to do some sort of collaboration. Because I know... YouTube and, and uh, Teespring are like in bed, so I don't know how, how well that would work. But Or maybe like uh, Vistaprint sucks too. So it's like, <laughs> who does your guys' merchandise? Like if you guys had an in-house merchandise plugin that would just be on ViewStub that people could moderate like mm -hmm. Teespring but higher quality? We are actually um, working on our own. Yeah. So it yeah. is. It is in um, phase one cool. still. Okay. Um, in the edit event page, you'll see the option of clicking a box that says not an event. Um, mm -hmm. So that's step one in it. So that's if you wanna just use the secure paywall but not necessarily grant access to anything. So that's great if you want to sell sponsors, sponsorships, excuse me, um, or merchandise. Oh, okay. So it is, it is coming. Um, okay. But just not quite cool. yet. Yeah, because the thought that I had was just like the same way that I see like the video playlist or like how there's all these different little panels is there could just be another panel that just says, you know, merchandise and branding or, you know, it could be whatever. Right. You know, yeah. The thought that came up that uh, merchandise, I'm trying to think what else could be on the, I mean, obviously the 720 is kind of, you know, uh, disappointing, but. You know, with eCam, I can use 1080p to just port in, so hopefully it'll be okay. Um, yeah, we're but... we're capable of up to 4K. Oh, really? And the equipment is also. <laughs> okay, but, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, with our new AWS servers, you oh, can... You know, oh, okay, I thought you said... The, oh, okay, wow. All right, that's great. So um, definitely um, create test events, as many as you'd like until you feel comfortable enough to be able to accomplish... Um, the virtual event vision that you intended. Because as you cool. can see, the, the platform is pretty flexible. Oh, pretty it looks like YouTube, it looks like a paid YouTube, basically. Yeah, and, and the intention was to bridge the gap between, you know, monetizing your content and having a management system that is mm. organized enough to be able to- And also a relationship with the company management. too. That like yeah. that's one thing that YouTube has totally failed on is that they have absolutely zero communication with their creators. That uh, I definitely think that that's you know, and the thing is, it could be called you pay per view, like YouTube. There would be you pay per view, you know. But I don't know if that would be copyright infringement on YouTube, but <laughs> uh, that would be uh -huh. YouTube. But you pay tube view, or you know, you pay per view. You know. Right. Oh, that, that's a little clever. I kind of like it. It's a little catchy too. <laughs> okay. Put that in your in your feedback form. I'm curious. Oh, I've got like sixteen hundred. <laughs> I've got like seventeen hundred notes in my uh, note thing right now that I got to go through. So. Yeah, this, this video is gonna come in handy later when we try oh, to yeah. remember true. all the the feedback, right? <laughs> Um, so when it comes to view step, anything in particular you're looking to know? I know it's a little. Uh, well, like I said, mainly I think I would like to see the interface as far as putting eCam into uh, view stub. And obviously, Kelsey's going to have more, you know, specific questions as far as events. But I'm more so the technical end of this how. Is 
It's right here. Cool. This is where the technicality comes in. This is where you actually go live, upload content. Um, basically, once the event is published, all the details are in there. This is where you're going to be spending all of your time. And it's going to start down here at the I add new uh, live stream or upload. And you would basically just put in uh, the details mm -hmm. right here. Yep. Yeah, right here is where you would actually pick access. So who gets to see what? OK. It's going to generate a new one of these. And they will begin populating. We are um, receiving a lot of feedback in the order that they populate. They will actually populate towards the back right now. Okay. So that's just something um, to keep Is in there mind. any way to get me access so then I can like do it? Like connect Ecamm somehow and see how... Because like you, you, I, the live stream, the H, whatever, the... Yeah, that I wonder how that would work, like through Ecamm. So I'm not too familiar with Ecamm, okay. but keep in mind, you're not going to be charged anything to create a test event. Okay. So don't put any tickets. Go through all the required information, like the event name or whatever. You could put. Oh, okay, what you're saying is, is that like after we get done and I get some time, I need to go in there with my login and then. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, and, and, and if I have any questions, then I then I would reach out. And that's the easiest way for me to help you fill in those gaps. Cool. Mm -hmm. And then the next time, I'll have already signed in, and then I'll just share my screen and then show you whatever questions I have. Exactly. Nice. Okay. Cool. Exactly. Cool. That's exactly so, how that works. Um. So yeah, same thing for video upload. As you saw, it just asks you to put in a file instead. We're gonna go live now. Um, that's exactly what you would do for testing purposes. You can pick a date and time to go live. Um, one thing to know, as you see this just populated, as soon as you create one, unless you are within an hour of streaming, you're not gonna be able to set up the stream. So for testing purposes, don't worry about putting a date and time on your media player. Mm -hmm. You could just click the go live now button. And that instruction that just popped up does state that you have to be within one hour. Um, so little tip, if you see this button and you click it and there's no URL given, only stream key, that does mean that you did not click the set up stream button. So once you set up the stream, um, as you can see, it's preparing. Your, for your live, it'll provide you with both the stream key and the stream URL. So that does tend to confuse people a little bit, and that's something that I like to point out to everyone. Great. Yeah, any questions yeah. about that? No, I'm excited about the 4K that from all the conversations I had with Patrick, he only said it was 720. So I'm How interested. How long ago was this? What's up? How long ago was this? And a week ago, you know. Maybe. Unless unless they they changed anything, um, we did have a successful event in 4K already. Great, great. Yeah, yeah, because that was the only real, like, obviously, I would have used Ecamm and Ecamm's 4K, but then it would have, you know, dropped down. But yeah. if it can just do straight 4K, then, I mean, I mean, I can't think of any other... Yeah. Other than the green screen key. Unless you key know here. something that I don't, basically. Yeah. Like, other than the green screen keyer, which I could do with a Blackmagic A10 Pro that it takes out the green screen for you beforehand. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's the only other thing, though, that if the 4K is on there, the only thing that's not is the green screen keyer, I guess. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I'll put that in the uh, form. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I also think that would really be beneficial, um, especially since you're, you're very lucky to have a studio. A lot of people don't have a studio, and so that green screen might come into use um, if they're doing a virtual event remotely. Absolutely, and we plan yeah. on uh, painting the floor green. and um, <laughs> Really? Yeah, so, and the ceiling if we want to. 
in that wow. the, there's going to be a four foot or let me bring over ecam because with ecam i can switch cameras here okay Actually, so did you do a 360 video green screen uh let me let me get up and kind of show you around a little bit because we are um we are 360 compatible and i thought that would be kind of cool if it would work with green screen as well Where are you located? Uh, Ohio. It looks lovely in Ohio. I know. I was going to see if there was any chickens for you. <laughs> uh, but they're not out there. I was going to get them to come. Very out. cool. But, uh, yeah, we, my neighbor's got goats and chickens. and. So you're not joking about being in the middle of nowhere? Nope. And then my grandma lived in the city. So uh, and my both my parents are not that we want to get too much into it. But, yeah. Um, I've been very lucky, you know, that uh, a lot of sacrifice of, you know, to be an entrepreneur and stuff, but uh, overall. Risk to reward. You guys are good at that. Yeah. And I'm an only child, too. So it's kind of like whatever money that I put in the building, I'm going to get back out of it. And not a lot of people can say that they own their own studio. You know, nobody in the city owns their own studio. So uh, I think I feel like rent is a waste of money. You know, why would you want to just burn money, you know, rather invest in your own property? And obviously you have to be born, you know, uh, Warren Buffett says the most important lottery in everybody's life is your zip code. You know, <laughs> what zip code were you born into? You know, so uh, my grandparents, you know, came over from Europe when they were 11, you know, or younger. You know, Russians were coming from one side, Germans were coming from the other. You know, and so they didn't speak English, you know, went to, you know, college, learned English. My grandma was a seamstress, you know, tailored suits. My grandpa had a machine shop. This is the machine shop. Wow. He passed away when I was, you know, very young, so I didn't get to know him. But, you know, he built up this place and uh, my dad gave me my grandfather's last name because my grandmother had two girls. So I was kind of like the prodigal son in a you sense. You are the legacy. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you your studio. You turned you can tell, like I'm a try hard. Yeah. Like I've cut off like you know all of my friends. Like I'm really you know I don't want to talk about you know who the best is or listen to the best. Like I want to be the best, you know, in whatever I'm doing. And you know I'm looking forward to working with you guys because you know having a uh, pay per, a literal pay-per-view system where everybody's not stealing content, you know, <laughs> CDs are free, you know, DVDs are free, everything's free, you know. Um, and I'm trying to think, I mean, other than, because, I mean, people could technically record their stream and stuff. What about copyright? Like, I'm trying to think, like, I guess someone could scream. What about or, copyright? What about it? But uh, like, let's say we have an event, right? Mm -hmm. And someone records their screen and then reposts it to YouTube. How would we you can, flag it? How would we take it? I mean, maybe that's more my on my end as well, far as lawyers really or like, something. After the fact, it, you know, ViewStub can't really do much unless right. it's happening on our platform, of course. Um, but that you sounds like more of a me problem kind of thing, I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm happy to answer any questions you have about the platform so far. Cool. If there's anything you can't even wrap your head around while you're using it. I mean, and obviously I haven't used it yet, so I don't have any questions for you. I'm really. sure you will have questions when oh, you yeah. do start getting <laughs> in there. No, and I'm not going to have any questions. <laughs> at that point, I would rather, while you're on there, answer your questions. Yep. You can call me. Um, if I'm not on a meeting or a phone call, I will answer yeah. you. You can oh, also really? text me. Yeah, yeah. I want to be well, able to answer your questions while and you're where are you Where are you in, like, what state? I am in Orlando, Florida. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Go. So uh, hopefully when things open back up, we'll all be reunited. But as of right now, everyone in the office is remote. Nice. Um, but not difficult for us to do right we're a live stream no, no complaints <laughs> right no easily complaints. adapted yeah <laughs> easily adapted. awesome yeah. well if you need any help or you know because i was even talking to patrick that he was talking about having a tricaster switcher or something like that that there's like different possible jobs or different things that this is all i do 
right? So I'd love to like make this into a career, have a job that's related to what I'm already doing. You oh, know, yeah. I, if it's a and as a brand ambassador, or, there's yeah, a lot of affiliate. Yeah, he, yeah, you basically have us as your resource, but yeah. you are going to be your own salesperson, and then you exactly. have the support of the whole team. Sure. So if at any point you know, you need me to jump in with a potential client of yours to yeah. show them like, hey, this is how we would accomplish your event. We're more than happy to do so. Because right. as a brand ambassador, you're almost partnered with Vstep. And how many of you are there? We are a very small team. So there is myself um, and there is um, one more account manager. And we're both underneath two of the sales reps which they're uh, in business development, which is Josh and Dylan. And then you have um, above us, which is Patrick, the co-founder, Spencer. And then we have a, a small marketing team of about two others. Um, and then we have Blair, which she deals with investments. So we are a very small, close-knit team. Yeah, it's great to know that organizational structure. That's awesome. Yeah, but as you can see, we like to give everyone the time of day. Yep. Um, of course, it would be impossible if the platform wasn't so user friendly, if the platform wasn't so do it yourself, if they relied heavily on on someone and it wasn't as autonomous as it is, uh, that would be an issue. But it's not. So we like to give you guys our time. Yeah. And we just really need you to close the deal where it's kind of like, hey, we've already shown you the service that you know you already need, that you're going through all of these different uh, third parties. Now I'm going to step away. I've made the connection. And then you fin and then you basically close the deal in showing them how it's going to work. And either they do it or they don't. You right. Know? And and the thing is that the sales team right above us, you know, they, they close the deals. And then me and Kelly, the other account manager, we step in like, are you comfortable going live? Did you do A, B, and C? Great. And so I wouldn't have to handle any of that. It would be all on view stub to handle that. All I ask is you guys stuff. try it out. I'll fill in the gaps for you. I'm going to make sure that you can do it all on your own. And it's like riding a bike. Once you do it once, unless we change something on the sure. view stub end, it's not going to change and you can sure. do it over and over. Yeah. Sure. And what I was talking about was, for example, like up and up, right? That once I connect you guys and up and up, and then I'm obviously the affiliate that connected it, they would be going through you as far as technical support and questions, or would they kind of go through me and then I'd, you know, try to help them out with 90% of what they wanted and then they would go to you or what would be that? Yeah, you basically, uh, you're going to be there for your client as much as you can. And whenever you need us, yeah, you're not going to be alone. You can okay. send them to me. You could give them my information like, yeah. hey, or you could contact me on their well, behalf. We have the big meeting, you know, I think, you know, that was, that was just going to be, you know, what I present, you know, when I p present with Patrick, with the owners is that, mm -hmm. you know, there is, you know, people that will walk you through. And there's a, another guy named Ben that's, that's from up and up that helped me, you know, set up everything. And obviously I said, I set everything up, but he at least instructed me and, uh, he told you what they you, you and him would get along very well, you know, cause he's a genius with, you know, the, the technology and the different sponsors and, you know, how everything works with Ethernet and mixers and all of that. Right. And then, you, yeah, there's a lot. Exactly. Yeah. So I definitely think, you know, good people from, I mean, it just feels good that, uh, you know, to like connect one group of good people with another group of good people. It's just going to be like good business. And it's like kind of like a no brainer where it's like, and it's all yeah. mutually beneficial. And yeah. that's, what, that's what we like to keep is that it feels good. Uh, positive relationship where, you're happy and we're happy because we're helping your event be a success. We technically rely on your event to be successful for us to be successful. Yeah. So it's always been great. It hasn't, it hasn't ever been, um, it hasn't ever been, you know, where we haven't been able to be the solution for someone. So, and then anything that has kept people from the platform, these are the developments that they're making now. So um, right. especially with this native live streaming, 
people technically won't need. 4K native mm-hmm. live streaming. You got to throw that in there too. And I think that might be what he was um, mentioning that um, with our live streaming, it might be up to 720. Oh, okay. But yeah, if you're not going to use our native live streaming, you probably could go up to exactly. 4K. That's EK. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, EK. Depending yeah. on your talk. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sweet. What sweet. you send us is what we'll receive. Sweet. So is there anything that I need, any homework for me or other yeah, than... Uh, you have homework for sure. Good. And it would be to create a test event, um, kind of come up with something, um, use the features as much as possible. You know, um, under that ticket section, we have promo codes, custom questions. Um, kind of navigate the platform the way that your clients would, just so that you know what to present to them and you you know where to go and what to do. And like, if they ask you, well, this, you you know the answer. You won't have to wait for me. My goal is to get you familiarized with the platform, comfortable with going live on the platform. And um, after that, you're gonna probably feel super confident in using it. Any event, no matter what they're looking to do, you'll know how to get it done virtually. You'll know all the ways to accomplish it using our features and our capabilities. And then test the the 4K. You know for a fact if you want to use 4K, this is the best software. Um, well, and especially because with eCam, you're able to take the green screen out as well. So I'd have to use it anyways, you know, p- to be able to produce what they want me to produce. Kind of. Yeah. Thing. So if you know for a fact you want to use eCam, see how eCam. Yeah. Um, eCam is the only service that I've found that's 4k and you can switch between cameras and uh it has like different plugins and um i don't know it it works for me yeah i would love to see you do the green screen and everything i don't think can i present i mean we don't have a bunch of time though you can go Um, ahead and present if you'd like or after you do your test um we actually get to see can you you see my screen okay maybe Oh, it's telling me I've got to do, uh, here we go here. Okay. Google Chrome. Oh, crap. It's not letting me because it's Google. It's letting me, it's asking me to give permission, but it wants me to restart the browser in order to share the screen. Um, Can can I throw something in comments? Can I throw like a file in comments? Yeah, sure. Okay, let's see. If um, important works. information for you. Okay. Google Chrome is the recommended browser as the mm. organizer and for attendees. Um, Microsoft Edge does not seem to work well. Safari mm-hmm. does work for the most part. I was told close to 90% of the time if you disable cookies and cross-site tracking. Um, with the latest version of the iPads, it still does not seem to work. And depending on what uh, mobile device you have, it does not seem to work for certain Apple products. That's so good to know. Like as far as like to look back on the, the recording to see that. Yeah, they, they're able to narrow it down. Um, and this goes for all live streaming. Google Chrome just seems like the best browser. I'm going to gonna ask Siri where she is because I don't know where she's at. Hey, <laughs> Siri, where are you? Hey, Siri, where are you? All right, she's not answering me. Ooh, she's lost. I don't know. Or she's on silent. I'm going to go ahead and end the recording. Yeah, and then I'll email you what the... What